Baseball here on NBC Bay Area and the Giants Television Network. I'm Raj Mathai. John Miller still making his way up to the broadcast booth. Our starting lineups now for the New York Mets brought to you by Dodge Ram, the truck that never backs down from a challenge. Leading off, Ruben Tejada, Jason Bay coming in at second, David Wright, the all-star batting third, Carlos Beltran cleaning up tonight, Jeff Francoeur. Ike Davis, the first baseman. Rod Barajas, as Mike Kruko would say, in the squat. Alex Cora playing second. And Jonathan Neese, the young pitcher, pitching for the Mets. Barry Zito starting now for the Giants. And once again, John Miller making his way up to the broadcast booth right now. We are inside the Giants dugout. F.P. Santangelo also with us tonight. Zito with the curveball. One and one pitch now to Ruben Tejada in for the injured Reyes. Barry Zito now just one win in his last 10 starts, so he needs to turn things around. 2 1 pitch now to Tejada. It's a deep drive into center field. And Aaron Rowan is there to make the catch. F.P. Santangelo with us now. F.P., how you doing up there? Let's I'm send doing, it up to you. I'm doing good, Raj. Let's set the defense tonight for the San Francisco Giants. Burl, Rowan, and Torres in the outfield. Renteria and Sandoval on the left side. Aribe and Huff on the right side. Buster Posey doing the catching. And Barry Zito on the mound. Remembers last out. He had 113 pitches in the four and two third inning stand against Milwaukee. He hasn't won his last starts. He's one and three with a 5-1-9 ERA. Command has definitely been the issue with Zito, but he loves him some home cook, and he's five and one at the ballpark with a 2-8-3 ERA in his nine starts here this year. 0-1 pitch now to Jason Bay from Zito. And yeah, FP, as you were saying, with Zito, this is uh, maybe the timing is perfect for him here. One win in his last 10 starts, but the Mets slumping a bit as well. This is uh, just starting off their season-long 11-game road trip, so a good timing for Zito against these Mets. Okay, enough of me down here in the dugout. John, how do I do this now? Do I need to call you something different? Here now, the Hall of Famer, John Miller. Take it away, and John, congratulations. Thanks, Raj. And, uh, yeah, call me uh, an ambulance or something. Get, get me some oxygen, will you? I'm a... Uh... <laughs> Did you jog up I'm, the stairs? I'm hyperventilating here. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm, uh, I have jelly knees. So, I'm, uh, all I could think of was, uh, I'm not worthy. I'm not worthy. Well, you did a great job, <laughs> and that was a fantastic ceremony. Let me tell you. Jason Bay, the hitter, with one out and nobody out. What happened to the first hitter? Ruben Tejada flew out to center field. So they just started the game before I got up here? Yeah, some pull you have, <laughs> Hall of Fame announcer. We started the game without you. One ball, two strikes to Jason Bay, hitting 267, six home runs, and 44 batted in. You're not Mike Kruko. I'm not. Frank Paul Santangelo. It's a pleasure to be <laughs> along with you tonight, John. It's an honor, actually. That, yes. was, that was really cool to see what just took place on the baseball field. Well, they surprised me with my daughter Emily singing the national anthem. She had vowed she would never sing the anthem as Bay is called out on strikes. Two down. Game time weather is brought to you by Orchard Supply Hardware, California's favorite home improvement store. Temperature 62 degrees, winds 10 miles an hour of the west southwest. Humidity 74%. And the forecast for tonight is partly cloudy with a lot of orange. It is Orange Friday. David Wright, the hitter, with uh, Beltran out on deck. And uh, it has turned into a cool evening after a, a string of beautiful days and nights here in San Francisco. But after a very warm, toasty afternoon, the fog came in through the Golden Gate and is overhead here at at and Park. Two balls, no strikes to David Wright, hitting 3-10. 14 homers and 65 runs batted in. And he had two hits in the All-Star game for the National League on Tuesday. Zito had him swinging right through that fastball. 
Yeah, David Wright for the last month and a half has been one of the toughest outs in the National League. If you remember last night off Lincecum, his first at-bat, hit that ball deep to center field, and then Lincecum kept him in check the rest of the way. Three and one now with, as we said, Beltran out on deck. He would be next. Two down, nobody on. With Barry Zito trying to get things going again. And it's three and two. Wow. Two times on fastball counts. He's had David Wright swinging right through his fastball. Yeah, command has been an issue for Zito. His last couple of starts, he's been afforded some big leagues and he couldn't hold on to him. But so far, so good for Zito. He's got to establish that fastball. When he was good early in the season, he was throwing that thing early in the count for strikes. And he struck him out with a changeup. A very strong first inning for Zito. And now, the Giants coming up. Check him out at Jeep.com. Andres Torres back in the lineup in center in the right field. Edgar Enteria at shortstop. Aubrey Huff hitting third at first base. Buster Posey, who is on a remarkable streak, 514 average in a nine game hitting streak. He's the catcher. Pat Burrell in left. Uribe at second. Sandoval at third. Rowan in center. And Zito hitting ninth. All up against the young Mets lefty, Jonathan Nice. And he paints the outside with a called strike. To Torres. Yeah, Nice works very fast. John got a fastball cutter. He'll cut it on righties early. He'll backdoor it late. His best pitch is a curveball. Got a nasty 12 6 curveball. Right down off the foot. And uh, Torres with a count of 0 2. Now, Freddy Sanchez was in the first version of tonight's lineup, and then he was a late scratch during batting practice. And apparently, he's sick. So he's missing the game. Edgar Renteria put it short, and a rebate will be playing second. 0 2 the count. And the high fastball fouled away at 90 miles an hour from Nice. Here's the defense for the New York Mets tonight. It's Bay, Beltron, and Frank Coor in the outfield. Tejada and right on the left side. Cora and Davis on the right side. Rod Barajas is doing the catching for the New York Mets. And off the inside. One ball, two strikes. Nice pitching with Barajas, as you say, catching. And Brian Onora, the crew chief. Behind home plate, calling the balls and strikes. Curveball, and he got a piece of that one. One ball, two strikes. There's the numbers on Jonathan Nice tonight. Like I said, fastball 87 to 91. He likes to cut it in on right. He's got a great curveball, got a great tempo. I talked to Jerry Manuel before the game tonight. He said if you see a lot of ground ball outs on the left side, he's got it going on. And a foul fly off the right field line. One ball, two strikes now. As uh, Torres continues to battle him here, this will be the seventh pitch of the sequence coming up. Third baseman David Wright is over close to that foul line, as you can see. And that one is back and out of play. Neath, Neath is only 23 years old, six feet, four inches tall. It looks like he'd throw 95 miles an hour, but he's 
He's more. He's got a decent fastball, but he's more of a of a finesser, I guess. That slider whacked foul right by Tim Flannery. Well, Dave, David Jowes, the bench coach for the Mets, was saying that he's got good enough stuff to be a number one starter someday. Like you said, John, a very young guy, but he's growing in confidence every single start out there. They like his tempo. I talked to Alex Corey. He said he gets it and throws it like Kurt Reeder used to for the Giants. So the Mets defenders love to play behind this guy. He just gets it and throws it. One ball, two strikes to Andres Torres. And that's a good job of stepping out right there. I mean, you hit on your terms as a hitter. That's in play, right center, but there is Frank Coor. And he finally got him on the ninth pitch of the sequence. So Torres gave him a workout, but finally succumbs. I'm John Miller, along with F.P. Santangelo, Mike Kruko, has the weekend off uh, to spend with his family after the All Star break. And uh, F.P., the Giants got some great pitching last night, and uh, they're hoping that that sort of catches on with the rest of the rotation. Yeah, I mean, the rest of the rotation has to pick it up a little bit, especially Barry Zito. He's had a tough couple last outings. He went four and two-thirds against Milwaukee. Couldn't get the decision with a five-run lead. Command has been an issue. And as Brian Sabian said during the All-Star break, the pitching staff has been a little bit below par. They need to pick it up in the second half. That's a fair ball by Renteria down the right field line. And it does not hit that outcropping and right into the bullpen dugout area. And it's a stand-up double for Renteria. Edgar came in hitting 299. Is it the way that always happens? You think you have the day off, you think you're just going to kick it on the bench and watch a major league ball game, and you're thrown in at the last second, and you lead it off with a double. Edgar Renteria, that's him going the other way, fastball away, and that's a great piece of hitting because with knees, he pounds right hitters, right handed hitters in all day long. So Renteria gets something out over the plate and does something with it. Great job by Edgar Renteria. Chance with the runner in scoring position. Here is Aubrey Huff. Too tight. One ball, no strikes. Huff is hitting 295, 17 homers, 54 batted in. Last night, the first game back, Huff with a single and a walk. And again, off the inside. So he's trying to work that inside here against the left handed hitting Aubrey Huff. There's not much wind blowing just at the moment. Even on a cool night with the fog, the ball can carry well here when there's little wind. That's right through the wide open left side of the infield. Renteria did not get a good break on that ball with the ball being hit in front of him. And that's the, the general reaction that you would expect. So he gets to third and no more. Time now for Bevmo's Who's Hot? The Bevmo five cent wine sale is on by one wine. Get the second one for just five cents on selected wines at Bevmo. It's Buster Posey. Who else? This month, the 12 games, he's hitting 500, 22 for 44 with six taters, 16 RBIs, and a 977 slugging percentage. Right man in the right spot right now for the Giants. Now, do you think Aubrey Huff looks at that defense sometimes? Because he had a hit similar to that last night when they had the, the full shift on for him, and he hit it right through that open hole on the third base side. And the curveball, a big bender in there for a called strike to Posey. Well, I commented on it last night. I think that, that it's over coaching when you go shift on Aubrey Huff. And the reason why Edgar Renteria couldn't score right there is that ball was hit right where the shortstop Tejada should have been. But he was pulled up the middle and he had to wait right there, checked it, make sure the ball got through. That's a foul and it's 0-2. Aubrey Huff just taking an outside fastball and going the other way, and that should be a routine six to three. But because for some reason the New York Mets think Aubrey Huff is a dead pull hitter, he laughs at the shift. He sees this fastball away and just goes with it. Great piece of hitting by Aubrey Huff. And Posey fouls that one away, and the, the Giants are making Jonathan Neese throw a lot of pitches early on in this inning. That was his 17th pitch of the inning. The middle infield double play depth. Posey, who's been knocking in a lot of runs lately, 16 RBIs in the last 12 games, including another one last night, trying to put the Giants ahead. And the curve in the dirt blocked in the classic fashion there by Rod Barajas, keeping the runners right where they are. That's a great take by Buster Posey. Nice will try to do that, too. He's got a good curveball. What he does with two strikes is he tries to bounce it. He makes it appear like it's a strike. Sometimes he'll try to steal strike one, just throw it over in a 0-0 count. But when he gets a hitter up against it with two strikes, he'll bounce that thing. So Buster Posey's seen the ball big.
And they're going to try to turn two. There's one at second, and they get the double play. And that ends the inning. Beautifully turned by the Mets. Our Toyota by the numbers say yes to unbelievable deals on your favorite Toyotas. In terms of San Francisco Giants history, the fewest games to reach 50 wins, and that's what Linsicum did last night. Juan Marichal took him 97 games, took Linsicum, Linsicum 109, and Russ Ortiz, you see there, 114. Gentlemen, back up to you. And John, if the elevator had gotten stuck, FP and I were just going to do a split broadcast. It would have been terrible. <laughs> hey, speak for yourself, young man. <laughs> Yeah, I have a feeling you guys would have been just fine. Here's ball one. Uh, that looked pretty close right at the knees to Beltran leading off for the Mets here. The cleanup man against Zito in the second. No score in the game. Huff in shallow right. And dancing a bit, but he got it with Uribe alongside. Hey, Grateful Dead fans, we have two offers for you. The Giants merchandise package is special. Grateful Dead t-shirt and cap can be purchased by phone mail order for $40, which is a $7 savings. Individual items are currently on sale at, exclusively at any Giants dugout store. Call one 5 giants to order today. That number again is one 5 giants Zito can play some... Grateful Dead standards with his guitar as Frank Coor into the glove of Burrow. Jeff Frank Coor, a very aggressive hitter at all times, is promptly retired. He came in hitting 253. And with two down, here is Ike Davis, the young slugging first baseman of the Mets. Now Barry Zito will take that after throwing 113 pitches in four and two thirds inning, his last outing against Milwaukee. He will welcome any first pitch hacking by the New York Mets tonight. You see in the hand operated scoreboard in the background there, the Cardinals clobbering the Dodgers in the top of the eighth inning. They beat them last night as well. That's at Bush Stadium, St. Louis. And the high fastball for a strike to Ike Davis. Ike hitting 254, but 11 home runs and 40 runs batted in in 279 at bats. And the curveball, strike two call. That was his best pitch his last out in Milwaukee. Barry Zito did have the good curveball going. And Ike Davis, welcome to Barry Zito. That was a good one. And Ike lifts a foul off the left field line that will go back into the crowd. Sandoval gave chase. He made a nice catch going down that left field line last night in the eighth inning of the game, back of Tim Linscombe. 
Two down, nobody on, no score in the game here in the second. No balls, two strikes. Zito delivers. A little bit off the outside. Got a little extra in that fastball, 88 miles an hour. A little cutting action on it. Yeah, talk to Mark Gardner. Barry Zito's been having trouble finishing guys off. I mean, he's throwing too many strikes with two strikes. He struck him out. Six in a row retired by Zito. Three strikeouts. Pearl coming up. He does want some people to know about it anyway. And uh, my humble thanks to the Giants for having this night. Russ Hodges, Lon Simmons, two great voices of the Giants who taught me the game, taught me about the Giants, and described the exploits of one Willie Mays, the best there ever was. Could not help but become a baseball fan. In, in those days, if you were here in San Francisco, listening to them tell you about Mays, McCovey, Cepeda, Marichal, and the, the great giants of that era. Pat Burrell, who's a Bay Area native, facing Jonathan Neese and the curve. He took it too low. Two balls and a strike to Burrell, hitting 286 for the Giants with five homers, 11 battered in, and 91 at bats. No score in the game. And the fastball down and away. And it goes to three and one. The infielder swung way around toward the third base line. David Wright is playing him almost right on the line, deep at third. And the second baseman, Alex Cora, almost right up the middle. Cora and Tejada turned a beautiful double play against Posey to end the Giants' first inning as the count goes to three and two. And we did wonder about Tejada and whether he actually had his foot on the bag at second when he took that throw. That's ball four, Pat Burrow. Draws a walk to lead off the second inning. Comcast Sportnet has complete Giants coverage on Sportsnet Central every night at 10.30 p.m. Comcast Sportsnet, authentic Bay Area sports. And you, uh, you're a Comcaster. I am. I'm a knbr er and a comcast er So I really enjoy your talk show after Giants games. I think that's becoming a, a big hit amongst Giants fans. Uribe and the big curve drops in there for a called strike. We're talking about that play that ended the Giants first inning. Was his foot on the bag when he caught that throw from Cora? Absolutely. That's way close enough. I've seen guys five feet off the base and they still bang him. <laughs> when you when you saw it live without the slow motion and without the uh, the freeze frames, it looked like he was five feet off the bag when he caught it. The double play is one of the I think most beautiful. 
things in all of baseball because it's a, a, a ballet of timing and the guys have worked over and over and over again to get all of the timing right on that kind of a play. It is one of the, the I think the, the best things of, of any sport to see a, a, a good double play turn. Uribe hitting 248 chases that one fouling it. Well, that's why Alex Cora has stayed in the league for so long. You look at the feed right there that he gave Tejada. Ruben Tejada is a 20-year-old kid playing shortstop. I mean, what a luxury to have a veteran guy playing next to you. You look at them out there. They're talking to each other between every pitch. Alex Cora is basically mentoring this kid in the middle of a game. And that's a double play ball. Tejada to Cora to Davis. Two down. Nobody on for the Giants. And the double play has been the Achilles... Heel for the Giants so far this year. They just can't stop hitting into him. That's 95 double plays into which they have grounded and they have turned 54 ground ball double plays. That's, I don't know that I've ever seen that sort of disparity from, from any team. Well, it's a snowball at this point. I mean, you got guys at the plate thinking about not hitting into double plays, and what inevitably happens is you end up hitting into double plays. Sandoval. And that's ball one. Now Pablo hit a laser beam high off the Willie Mays wall in right field for an RBI double in the second inning last night. That curve is a strike. But Pablo, one thing that's been the primary difference between his game this year and last is batting for the right side. And that fastball down and away. Two and one last year. Pablo was one of the most fierce hitters in the league batting right handed against left handed he hit over 370 against left handed pitching this year Pablo is hitting only 217 against the lefties and it's especially had problems with that pitch that high fastball this was last night at the has a, a great piece of hitting by Pablo Sandoval got a fastball up in the strike zone off a knuckleball guy got on top of it and if he gets a little bit of lift on that ball it's in the water but a great piece by Pablo Sandoval turned out to be the only run the Giants would need last night Pablo fights that one off. Two balls, two strikes to count with two down and nobody on here in the second. And I think this is a big game for him tonight. You talk about he's hitting 217 right handed. Originally, he wasn't in the lineup tonight. Freddy Sanchez, last minute scratch. Now Pablo was put at third base. And the only way he's going to work things out from the right side is getting some ABs against lefties. The backdoor slider strikes recall. Nice pitching there by Nice. On to the third. Zito back to the hill. They're available to rent on a per game basis, including our upcoming series versus the Pods and the Cubs. For more information or to reserve your suite, call a Giants sales executive at 415 972 
2298. All right. Thanks for that uh, timely reminder, FP. And Barry Zito misses up and away with ball one to Rod Barajas. That's catcher. 238 average. He does have 11 home runs. Most of them, I think he hit that one three game series against the Giants when they were in New York earlier this year. Fastball in for a strike. Alex Cora on deck, then Jonathan Nice. That ball is raked, but foul down the left field line. Change up. Got him way out in front. One ball, two strikes. I was curious to see how Barry Zito would come out tonight. You talk about his last outing, four and two thirds inning. He was one out away from a decision. He was taken out of the game by Bruce Bochy. He looks very focused to me tonight, very determined, almost with a little bit of edge to him. Fastball's been good so far. Curveball's been very good. Changeup's been good. He's all in the strike zone. He's attacking the strike zone early and often. The point I was trying to make about with two strikes this season so far, Barry Zito's had trouble expanding the strike zone. He throws a lot of strikes with two strikes where maybe sometimes he'd be better off bouncing a curveball, bouncing a changeup, making a hitter chase a high fastball. Jammed him with that cutter, and Zito will give way to Huff. And there is one away. Let's go down to NBC Bay Area sports director Raj Mathai. John, thank you. Time now for our Xfinity Future Focus. We always like to see what the Giants are doing in the minor leagues. And take a look right now. Tyler Graham, the outfielder for Fresno, the AAA Grizzlies. Tyler Graham, you might recall, part of the Oregon State National Championship team bat in 2006. Right now he's on a tear. 63 games, has a 339 batting average. Brandon Belt, how about that for how about that for a name? 10 games in double A, has a 410 average with five home runs in 10 games, and the Giants top draft pick from last year, Zach Wheeler. You might have seen him pitching right before the All-Star game in the Futures game had one scoreless inning. Gentlemen. And this uh, uh, Brandon Belt, I'm very intrigued by him because he was tearing it up in the California League for San Jose. And then they moved him up to double A and uh, he picked right up where he left off. So this guy, it looks like he might be a, a genuine slugger. So we'll see how he continues to do as, as he goes along. If he continues to tear it up in double A, I'm sure they'll look for a spot for him in triple A. Alex Cora. Very high from Zito. Two balls, one strike to count. With uh, Jonathan Nice on deck. No score in this game. We're in the third inning. I'm John Miller with FP Santangelo. And a big crowd out here on a Friday night at AT&T Park. Got a chase of that high fastball. This series continues tomorrow night. Mike Pelfrey was originally scheduled to go for the Mets against Matt Kane of the Giants, but now. Uh, Takahashi will go. Pelfrey got some stiffness in his back on the long flight out here. And they're going to move him back a couple of days. Zeno strikes him out with a slider. His fourth strikeout. That's exactly what I'm talking about. When you have two strikes and you're Barry Zito, expand the strike zone, make the hitter chase the ball out of the zone. He showed Alex Cora a nice cut fastball at 87, the pitch before that. Alex Cora saw another cut fastball, and as soon as he started to swing, he realized it was a curveball in the dirt. Barry Zito needs to do more of that. Get to two strikes, bounce some stuff, throw some stuff in the dirt, throw some stuff up in their eyes, and you get a lot more strikeouts. Here's Nice, the pitcher, and uh, that fastball is very high. One ball and no strikes. Nice for the year with five hits, 27 at bats, including two doubles. That fastball in for a strike. One ball and one strike. So the idea being that you get ahead on the count, you don't have to throw a strike or even fool around with throwing a strike. Just make it look like a strike and make sure it ends up out of the strike zone somewhere. Yeah, because the hitter's up against it. If you look at the counts throughout baseball, when you're behind the count one and two and 0 oh and two, you're hitting like 100, 0, 90. The hitter's at a disadvantage there. And as a pitcher, you got to make him chase something. That curve off the outside. Two and two. That curve may have buckled Brian Onora. That's the best one he's thrown all night. <laughs> two and two. And a foul on that fastball back out of play. Two and two the count. But the, and you're talking 0 oh and 2. You get ahead 0 oh and 2, 1 and 2. What about 2 and 2? That's a little, little more difficult. We have a pitch to play with here. You could make him chase and then go back in the strike zone three and two. The slider. Wow, what an eye. 
No swing, said the third base umpire, Ted Barrett, and it's a full count. Well, that was a great pitch. I thought he went on it, and I thought it was pretty close to going. No, he held up. It's and he strikes it out. Zeno got the strikeout pitch working. That's five in three innings. Rowan coming up. A lot of talk about Buster Posey, and rightfully so. He has been tearing it up in the month of July, a 500 batting average, 22 of 44. But it's also his defense that brings us to our Xfinity Game Vision. You can control the video in your own living room. You can be your own producer or director. Buster Posey last night throwing out Carlos Beltran, trying to steal second base or at second base. And, and gentlemen, like we said, a lot of offense, but defensively doing so well and also calling the game. There were concerns that if Buster Posey was ready to be a major league catcher, at least defensively, so far he's answering all those questions very well. Indeed, and he just seems to have the uncanny ability for making that throw on a would-be steal. Talking to Bill Hayes, who's a longtime catcher, who's a Giants coach now, who works with the catchers. And especially the young catchers with the, the fundamentals and, and how to get it done, the mechanics of it. He says, I didn't have to teach him a thing. His mechanics are flawless. The best I've ever seen, said Bill. Shallow right, there is Frank Coor. And Aaron Rowan is out number one here in the third inning. And now Barry Zito to the plate. He's got a, a, a strong an arm, as you'll see, in the league. And uh, he's just so fluid and makes it look so easy. Very polished for a 23 year old. I mean, you keep reminding yourself how old Buster Posey is. 23 years old, and when he was at Florida State, probably didn't call a lot of games. The head coach, Mike Martin, probably was calling every single pitch. And for him to just be in the minor leagues for a little under a year and to come up here and do what he's done as far as handling a game, I had no doubt that he could hit at this level. But some of the things he's done at the plate mature beyond his years. But the way he's called the game and the tempo of the games. Is impressive. You talk about Tim Linscombe and what he did last night, catching a complete game shutout as a rookie, and the game just has a nice flow to it, has a nice tempo that speaks highly of Buster Posey and his game calling skills. Two and zero to Zito from Jonathan Neese, who drops that one in there for a called strike, and it's two and one. Barry Zito has had five hits and 28 at bats with a couple of runs battered in. Also leads the club among all the pitchers in sacrifice bunts. Back to Neese. Two men gone. Today they had a a, a nice luncheon uh, for for me and my family, and uh, a lot of the Giants people were there, including Willie Mays and Orlando Cepeda and McCovey. And talking with Mays while we were out there today on the Potomac, 
FDR's old presidential yacht, which was a really a thrill. And uh, there's the baby bull, and Tito Fuentes was that way, and we steamed out into San Francisco Bay. It was a, a, a fabulous treat aboard one of the most historic vessels afloat, the Potomac. As uh, Andres Torres looks at a cold strike, too. But Mays was talking about Posey while we were out there sailing the bay. And uh, and Mays was so impressed with Posey, and he, had, he has not met him. He says, hey, Posey may not even know who I am. I said, are you kidding? You're Willie Mays. Everybody knows who you are. But he was especially taken with just what you're talking about, though, his two-strike approach, the, the innate sense he has for that aspect of the game. And if you give him a pitch that is not a pitch to pull, well, he takes it to right field. He, he takes what you give him. Two and two the count. A check swing. Did he go? Yes. The first base umpire, Mike Gesterbrook, rings up Andres Torres. So the Giants down in order against Nice. Top of the order for the Mets against Zito, Tejada, Bay, and Wright. Throughout his career, he has always revved it up in the second half, and he he got shot a little bit early. He pitched a real good one just before the All-Star break in his most recent start. Lead-off man for the Mets, Ruben Tejada. And the changeup from Zito, too low for ball one. No score in the game. No runs, two hits for the Giants. No runs, no hits, no base runners for the Mets. Tejada flied out to center his first time. And that's the first hit for the Mets, the first base runner. Rowan over into right center to pick it up. And now the power comes up. Jason Bay, David Wright, Carlos Beltran. What has happened to Jason Bay? If you're a Mets fan, you have to be wondering. He hit 36 home runs for the Red Sox last year. Obviously, City Field in New York is a much bigger ballpark, a tougher home run ballpark. But from 36 to 6, I think they still thought maybe he might hit 25 to 30. And maybe he will with a big second half. But New York is not an easy place to come as a big, highly publicized, highly paid free agent. Well, he's turned into a scrappy two hitter. This is the first time all season long that Jerry Manuel's put him in the two slot. He's got 10 stolen bases, and now he's hitting second. At the knees with a fastball from Zito, strike one. Bay was called out on strikes his first time. Bay's numbers are not bad considering the, the lack of home runs. He has 44 RBIs. That's in the right center. And uh, Andres Torres. Tejada will go back to first. 
And Andres was playing over in that direction to begin with, so he didn't have that far to go. Well, like I said, that's the first time that Jason Bay has hit second this year. And to me, it looked like right there he was trying to hit behind Ruben Tejada. You got a guy that you signed to hit Jackson. and he hasn't so far with only six this year. But if the manager puts you in the two hole on a given day, and that's the first time you've hit second all year, you don't necessarily have to pretend you're a two hitter and hit behind the runner. If I'm Jerry Manuel, I tell Jason Bay, just be yourself. I'm just hitting you second today because I want you to get a couple more at bats. Now, David Wright, who struck out his first time. Right is hitless in the series so far. And a foul out of play off the right field line. 86 mile an hour fastball and David Wright fouling it off the right field line. Earlier this year when Wright was really struggling, they were concerned his strikeouts were way up. He was hitting more home runs and he was driving in runs, but his batting average was way down. And the fastball, he blew that fastball right by him. And it's on two. But he had so many bats where it looked like he was behind pitches. Not 96 miles an hour, but 86. He was behind curveballs. And uh, I think that was, therein was the concern about David Wright. Well, if you watch him, he's a foot down early guy. What I mean by that, watch his stride foot. He sets it down nice and early, and he has to be on time. A lot of times, if you're a foot down early, sometimes you can get that thing down too early where you almost have to stride again. Watch how early he sets his front foot. Now it's there. He's got it planted. He's almost a no-stride guy. He's spread out, and that could take a little power away, John. That could make you be a little bit defensive. But a lot of times you'll see a guy that, that does do that, put it down too early, and it takes a lot of your momentum away as a hitter. One and two the count. In the dirt with a fastball, and Posey with a throw to first. Tejada just back in time ahead of Huff's tag. Now that's something we haven't seen a lot from Posey yet, but he could be a weapon. I imagine he can get pickoffs like that. Oh, you mean picking a fastball in the dirt on a short hop and then getting his feet <laughs> underneath him and throwing an absolute <laughs> seed to first base? Yeah, we haven't seen a, a lot of that. But I want to see more. I don't even care if he picks a guy off. I just like to watch this guy throw. Two and two the count. Tejada at first, one out. And the curveball strikes recall. Number six. For Zito. Here is our Ford right choice, and it definitely was the right choice. A big, slow bender that started in the left handed batter's box. This is what David Wright saw. He saw a ball that would have smoked a lefty in the front shoulder. It came back at the last minute for a strike. And a lot of the Mets hitters the last couple days have been guessing with two strikes. You see him taking a lot of called thirds. That tells me they're not really reacting. They're going up there and looking for a pitch when they're behind in the count. That was a uh... It was a guy, Mark Clear, had a big curveball back in the 80s, and he struck out John Lowenstein, veteran left handed hitter, to end the game with a curveball. And they said, John, what were you thinking when you took that pitch for strike three to end the game? He says, I was thinking, why are they throwing a pitch out? <laughs> there it is again. And it's one ball, one strike. So is that, I mean, it sounded like Lowenstein was joking, but when you see a big curve like that, it looks like it's headed outside, you're not swinging. Well, when Barry Zito's got his good curve going, if you're a hitter, you can turn to the up and say that ball was high and low. I mean, because when it's <laughs> that high and coming out of his hand, it comes across the strike zone, letter high. But then a lot of times you'll see the catcher, whether it was Benji Molina or now Buster Posey, catching it down around their ankles. That tells you that Barry Zito's got the good curve ball going tonight. Two down, runner at first. No score in the game. And the curve in there. Strike two call. Carlos Beltran, switch hitter. This is his second game of the year. He made his debut last night, coming back from the disabled list. Tonight, he popped up the first, his first time. One and two the count. Runner going. The throw, the tag. He's out, and Posey does it again. Unbelievable.
coverage, and this guy continues to amaze behind the plate. I called him Buster Hosey last night because his arm is so strong. But look at the footwork. This is a former shortstop in college, and it's almost like he's turning a double play. He got the feed from Barry Zito, got rid of the ball quick, and threw about 94 down to second base. Wow. Renteria hit a double his first time. Shows bunt. Takes a called strike from Jonathan Neese. No score in the game. Last of the fourth. The Giants two hits. The Mets with one. Giants had a, a great opportunity to score in that first inning when Renteria doubled. Huff singled him to third. The slider down and in. One ball, one strike. But the Mets turned a beautiful double play to keep the Giants off the board on a ground ball hit by Buster Posey. One ball, two strikes now. Bruce Bochy talking about Nice from the scouting reports and the video that they'd seen of him. And he, he likened him a little bit to, to Barry Zito in the way he goes about it. Now time taken in that he does not have an overpowering kind of a fastball and has several pitches and has command of, of all of them most of the time. One and two. The curveball. David Wright, who was hugging the line, throws him out. And there is one away. Giants baseball on an Orange Friday. I'm John Miller with FP Santangelo, Mike Kruko. As the weekend off, he'll be back with us when we get to L.A. on Monday. And the FP, the, the Giants finished up the first half on a big-time roll on the road with Buster Posey, Aubrey Huff, Andres Torres leading the way. Uh, but... Uh, still some room for an improvement as Brian Sabian said near the end of the first half uh, from the, the pitching and he most notably talked about the walks needing to cut down the walks. Yeah a lot of three ball counts in the first half of the season leaving your defense standing out there for a long time kind of takes the momentum away from you offensively so Brian Sabian very clear that he would like the pitching staff to be as advertised in the second half maybe be a little more aggressive in the strike zone and get the defense off the field, and I think you're seeing a different Barry Zito so far tonight as compared to the one you saw in Milwaukee his last outing, maybe in Colorado, too. He's getting it and throwing it. He's working just as fast as John Neese is. And as a defender, you like that. You talk about John Neese, he's a get it and throw it guy. He's been working fast so far tonight. I like what Edgar Renteria just did. He stepped out, tried to break up his tempo. If you talk to guys that like to throw the ball and get it and throw it, they don't like it when you step out of the box. Did he swing? No, says Ted Barrett on that big curveball. Two balls, two strikes to Huff, who hit a ground ball, basically right to shortstop. That there was nobody at shortstop, and he got a base hit in the first inning. Well, they've pulled David Wright way over. He's almost playing shortstop now, so they cover that hole. He's got the whole left field line if he wants it. The slider down and away, full count now. And that always used to blow my mind. You do the shift and you get everybody over, and then the pitcher throws a fastball away. And it allows you to go the other way as a hitter. And I still can't figure out why everybody thinks that Aubrey Huff is a dead pull hitter. And that is back out of play. Still three and two. So you set your defense one way to pull, and then you pitch him a different way away. It's just a head scratcher. I think there's sometimes you have coaches that don't have a whole lot to do, and they get all these charts off the computer and all these readouts. And so you, you might overthink it a little bit. You don't like these exaggerated defenses? No. Maybe for a couple guys here and there that deserve it, that warrant it. But A walk for Aubrey Huff with one out. And Posey coming up. Giants baseball is brought to you by Budweiser, official beer of the Thirst Any. Let's check out the crowd through the Thirst Any fan cam and see who's enjoying the game. Budweiser, it's what we do. Everybody enjoying the ball game tonight. Another Orange Friday. The Giants are six and zero on Orange Friday this year so far. Down the right field line, a fair ball. Huff heading for third. Brad Kuhr digs it out, and Huff will be held at third with one out on the double by Buster Posey. Just another lousy base hit for Buster Posey. Fastball away. And I'm telling you, folks, the swing doesn't get any better than that. Fastball away, hit it away down the corner. It's kind of odd to me, John, that nobody's tried Buster Posey in yet this year. Everything's been out over the plate. He's done a lot of damage the other way. Good job by Tim Flannery holding Aubrey Huff right here. Jeff Frank Poor has one of the better arms in the National League. But nobody's tried to pound him in. Nobody's tried to say, here, Buster, hit some hard stuff off the plate in. 
strikes inside. Everybody keeps trying away with Buster Posey. And I think he can handle the fastball. And don't get me wrong, it's just that I don't think anybody in the league has really tried that way to get him out so far this season. Now they're going to appeal at first base that he missed the bag on his way around. The home plate umpire has that call. And uh, home plate umpire tonight, Brian O'Nora, says no, he touched first. Yeah, because that's what he was looking for. He's calling balls and strikes. The ball hit down the right field corner. His first thought behind the plate is, let's see if Buster Posey touched first. <laughs> They're not looking for that. I don't know if he touched it or he didn't touch it. He clearly hit the bag right in the middle. <laughs> they might have got away with one. But it, it is the home plate umpire's call, though. Because the right field line umpire is looking for the fair or foul. They're going home. Chief! And the Giants have gone ahead. Alex Cora took a chance and for the second night in a row a Giants runner from third beats a throw from a Mets infielder to get a run time for our Lexus pursuing perfection play brought to you by your barrier Lexus dealer great job by Aubrey Huff at third base we talked about Aaron Rowan last night scoring a big run late in the game by getting a good jump off third base and Aubrey Huff going contact all the way I don't know about the decision by Alex Cora. Maybe he thinks that Barry Zito's got plus-plus stuff tonight and the Mets aren't going to score that many runs, but might have been better off the veteran infielder got just an out at first base. But great job and great hustle and great base running. I think we've seen it all year long from Aubrey Huff. Well, the Giants get that extra out and a chance to score more runs now. And the curveball, Uribe chasing a first-pitch curveball. He grounded into a double play on the curveball in the second inning. Well, Aubrey Huff had to beat that throw home. And uh, he went into that slide, and he got that foot down and hit the plate just before the tag. And it's on two to Uribe. Uribe finished the first half in a, in a deep slump. He had the sprained index finger in his left hand. You see Huff there with that right leg folded under that, that left foot reached forward, and, and he... Got it down to tag the plate just before he was tagged. And that's all for Uribe. So things are just not going well for Uribe right now. Three pitches and out with a, a runner at third that he could have knocked in without even getting a hit. Well, he struck out right there, John, and you would like him to drive in the run, maybe hit a fly ball in the center field or something like that. But it's better than hitting a ground ball to shortstop. We've seen a lot of double plays from the Giants this season. So it gives Pablo Sandoval a chance. And if you watch Juan Uribe all season long, he's done most of his damage with runners in scoring position on the first couple pitches. So here is Pablo. The curveball. Right to center. Right to Beltran. Hit it hard, but right to him. The Giants, though, have gone ahead as we move to the fifth inning. Beltran coming up.
on the peninsula, went to Cappuccino High School in Milbrae, one of the best players in Mets history. Now Keith Hernandez, part of the Mets broadcast team. And speaking of broadcasters, do we have Dwayne Kuyper in the NBC booth now? Dwayne? Oh, baby, I am. I'm, I'm walking out in the corridor, and they need a broadcaster. So, so here I am trying to see if I can catch a little job with the Giants. This is Carlos Beltran. Giants leading one nothing as Beltran takes a pitch down low. One ball and one strike. John Miller taking a little walk. Decided to be wanted to be with his family for an inning. And I think that's a good idea. On the ground foul to make it one and two. Although I walked in and I could see the look on FP's face. So I'm not doing nine innings with a Hall of Famer. I have a feeling you're going to have a ceremony in the field someday, too. Oh, yeah. One two pitch to Beltran. Chopper to Sandoval. Sandoval charging. One out. So, anyway, I'm Dwayne Kuyper, FP Santangelo, John Miller. Terrific ceremony before the game. He will go into the Hall of Fame next Sunday. And, uh, and we're looking forward to it. It's, it's, I think we saw. When they unveiled the disc, that it rocked them a little bit, and uh, if that's going to rock them, it'll be interesting how that Sunday ceremony is going to rock them. As Frank Court takes a strike, when his daughter Emily sung the national anthem, I mean, it doesn't get any better than that. That had to tug at his heartstrings a little bit. Down the left field line, Burrell moving over, still moving over, and. Well, he, he missed it. The ball swung out of his glove, and it ricocheted all the way underneath the cars. So a good effort by Pat Burley. He just couldn't keep the ball in the glove. Great effort by Burl. You see him take a look and try to find the wall, and then it looked like he might have lost it in the lights. There's a, there's a bank of lights that are right over the first base dugout, and when you go over there, the lights aren't suited for the ball and foul territory like that. They generally won't get in the way in fair territory. So you saw him shade his eyes, and I guarantee he lost that one in the bank of lights right over us. 0-2 to Francoeur. Francoeur pops this one foul. Well, getting back to the uh, pregame ceremonies for John Miller, I don't think there's any doubt that Emily Miller stole the show. I mean, that was automatic. Skied out into the shallow center field, Oribe putting it away in front of Aaron Rowan. If you didn't get a chance to see some of the ceremony, emceed by Dave Fleming and the unveiling of the disc out in left field. And that's Emily. And Emily just brought the house down. The animated John Miller. Pretty good mechanics right there. Not bad. Here's Ike Davis. Ike Davis takes a breaking ball in for a strike. Davis struck out in the second. One nothing Giants. When John came aboard in 1997, we did not know what we were getting. We knew we were getting a terrific broadcaster, but Hank Greenwald had left, and we were pretty set in our ways with Hank. As Davis takes a pitch high, so it took us about a week in one road trip to figure out whether John was going to be a good mix with us and it came when he picked up the check at dinner. I said all right. John's going to do that all the time. We got a winner here. And he picks up the big ones. He doesn't mess around. With he doesn't do lunch. He lunch. picks up the big ones. Yeah. Starbucks in the morning. No 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 the big ones. The ones where they add the tip that one of those. Wow. Two and two to Davis. And he got him with a breaking ball. And Davis is disgusted with himself.
after they beat the Red Sox 8 4. Benji Molina hits for the cycle. Twins beat the White Sox. The A's are victorious, and the Angels are shutting out the Mariners. In the National League, some good news for the Giants. You see the Cubs a winner. But the Reds beat the Rockies, and uh, the Cardinals beat the Dodgers. So things are happening in the National League West, although the Padres look like they've got a pretty good lead on Arizona. Here's Aaron Rowan, one nothing Giants, Rowan, Zito, and Torres. And Rowan bounces this one foul. Tim Flannery kicks the first one of the year, and it's one ball and one strike. Rowan popped out to right field. He's 0 for 1. Jonathan Nice, low. Two balls and one strike. Rowan, boy, that must be that cutter that is running right in on the hands. He's got a small cutter, but he's also got a little slider. That one broke a lot. It had a little tilt to it. So Jonathan Neese, not afraid to pitch in. His out pitch so far this season has been the curveball in the dirt. Likes to throw it with two strikes. Well, that's where he is right here. And Rowan takes wide, and it's three and two. With Zito to follow, and then the top of the order, Andres Torres. Only four hits in this game. The Mets have one hit. The Giants have three. And the walk to Rowan, and that couldn't come at a better time. Here's our scenic shot of the game. It's brought to you by Fries. Your best buys are always at Fries, guaranteed. It's a beautiful shot. Out by the Willie McCovey statue, looking into the cove and right through into the ballpark. Here's Zito. Zito's done a good job this year. Went in a position to lay down a sacrifice bunt. And he rolls this one foul. Broadcaster's jinx. No balls in one strike. Well, not a broadcaster's jinx. It's tough to lay down a bunt when you're facing a left-hander. So for Zito left on left, the ball's coming almost right at him. Seems like it's coming right at him. Nice with a three-quarter release. You got to hang in there if you're a left-handed hitter bunting against a left-handed pitcher. Look out as this is popped up, and they're going to let it fall. And they get the out there, and Zito has to hustle into first. It's a good play of anything. You get the pitcher on the bases. And you trade runners. Aaron Rowan with decent speed. He's a center fielder. He knows how to run the bases. He does it every single day, and you're... You're trading for Barry Zito, who plays once every five days and probably isn't used to running the bases. Pop that ball up. Good play by Ike Davis. So here's Andres Torres. Torres hitless in two trips. He's flied out and he's struck out. And he takes that breaking ball in for a strike. You talk about the importance of that bunt. Even if Barry Zito doesn't get that down and strikes out, you still have Aaron Rowan at first base. It gives you a lot of options if you're Bruce Bochy with Andres Torres. You can hit and run. You can steal. Now your, your hands are tied. Little chopper foul, nothing in two. You really don't generally hit and run with a pitcher on first base. Ball high. It's one ball and two strikes. Nice with three walks and three strikeouts. Out into right center field. Is this going to fall? No, as Francoeur runs it down and throwing back to first, and Zito is doubled up. We will head to the sixth. One nothing Giants.
Pablo, 29 years old, a career minor leaguer. Actually lives with Pablo here in the Bay Area in nine games so far for the San Jose Giants. He is 9 of 32 with one home run. And guys, on a serious note here, uh, over the All-Star break, they were saying Michael and Pablo. Pablo is saying that Michael and him just looked at tape for the next, last few days, trying to analyze Pablo's swing, see if there's any holes in that swing, and see if he can get out of his season-long slump. Back up to you. All right. Raj, trust me, leave it to a brother to let you know you're in a slump. <laughs> a 1 0 lead for the Giants is Rod Barajas will lead things off. John was supposed to take an inning off. He might take five. Yeah, you're here for the rest of the game. Here's the pitch to Barajas swinging a foul off of the shin guard of Buster Posey and it's no balls in one strike. Zito with 68 pitches which is. Phenomenal compared to. What happened in his last start in Milwaukee. 113 pitches after four and two thirds. Barajas big strong right handed hitter. Fouls another one and it's nothing in two. Pitching with a little edge tonight. Got a great tempo out there, great command of his fastball. He's been putting it where he wants to, burying it in on right handers late in the count, throwing his curveball for strikes early in the count. And I'm wondering if getting pulled out of that game. I mean, there's two ways you can take that as a pitcher. You can maybe feel sorry for yourself that you were taken out after four and two thirds with the decision on the line, or you could say, I'm going to show my manager that. But I can still get this thing done, and Barry Zito looks refreshed after the All Star break, to say the least. Fastball high, one and two. No walks for Zito. Seven strikeouts. Ruben Tejada, the only hit, a single in the fourth. And he got him swinging. For comprehensive coverage of everything orange and black, check out pregame live with FP Santangelo most nights and postgame live with FP Santangelo before and after every Giants telecast on Comcast Sportsnet. Let me Authentic see that. Let me see that. <laughs> yeah, my name's not in there. I just thought I'd drop it a couple times. That's where I'm usually at. So there isn't anybody else? Nope. Just me. Richie's never there. Bip's never there. Michael Urban's never on the set. Dave Ben, Scott Reese, it's always just me. Gary Radnich, he's never there. Here's Cora, and Cora bounces this <laughs> one to Huff. Huff will flip it to Zito covering in a nice 3 1 put out. So you basically alienated everybody. <laughs> no, I just gave him props, basically, in a backwards sort of way. No, I love those guys, they're all great. I look forward to everything, but when we throw the questions to you guys in the booth, for whatever reason, that always gets messed up. It's hard. Probably our fault. Yep. Here's Jonathan Neese. Neese struck out in the third inning. Zito with eight strikeouts. This will be FP's last night working for Mike Kruko. Mike will be flying in tomorrow. Fastball strike to Jonathan Meese. No runs on a hit for the Mets. One run on three hits for the Giants. This appears to be a sellout crowd. Swing and a miss, one and two. This is starting to remind me of that game in April where Barry Zito had the 10 strikeouts against St. Louis. He went eight innings, gave up three hits. He's got the same stuff going on tonight. Foul down the left field line and out of play. The one two. Very high two balls and two strikes.
Mets have lost four of their last five. And it's three and two to Nice. They've played poorly on the road. They're 18 and 25 on the road. And Nice with a mighty swing and a foul into the club level. Mets against the West are nine and seven. See pretty consistent across the board with his pitches per inning. And he walked them. First walk, and it's to Jonathan Neath. And here's Ruben Tejada, Tejada, the Mets shortstop. No Jose Reyes just yet in this series. Tejada one for two, the only hit for the Mets. Came off Tejada's bat to lead off the fourth inning. Takes that breaking ball down low. So Zito strike out to Barajas. Cora bounces out to first, and now with the pitcher at first, he falls behind one and zero to Ruben Tejada. And a strike to even the count. So that'll settle Zito down. One nothing Giants. Off the end of the bat, one and two. A great job by Barry Zito getting back in the strike zone. A lot of times you'll see a pitcher walk the opposing pitcher, and it gets in your gets in your head a little bit, especially when you talk about how Barry Zito's been cruising along all night, great tempo, throwing a lot of strikes, and all of a sudden you're telling yourself, "I got to throw strikes to the pitcher. I got to throw strikes to the pitcher. I can't walk the pitcher." You walk, and a lot of times you see the wheels fall off. And he got him with a breaking ball. Strikeout number nine. Brent Arena to lead things off. They tell us there's some good seats available for that game on Sunday, so come on out to the park. One nothing Giants as we head to the home half of the sixth inning, where Nice will face Renteria, Huff, and Posey. With the Giants on top, one zip.
Renteria doubled in the first, bounced out to third in the fourth. And the first pitch is wide. One ball and no strikes. 77 pitches for Jonathan Neese. Fouled at the plate to even the count at one ball and one strike. Huff. Watching from the on deck circle is Tim Lincecum watching from the railing after a complete game shutout last night. His 10th win. Good breaking ball one and two. We've seen good breaking balls from both Zito and Neese. Renteria back up the middle. Cora right near the bag makes the play and Huffle hit with one out. Huff has been on base twice. He singled in the first and then walked and scored in the fourth. The shift is modified on Aubrey Huff over the first game and a half of this series. We saw earlier when he got the base hit to the left side, David Wright was more toward third base. Now, David Wright's almost at shortstop trying to take away the left side. I mean, you see where David Wright is right there. He was over in this area earlier in the game. Low to Huff. I'd like to see that spray chart. I'm going to ask Dave Jass, the Mets bench coach, tomorrow before the game. I want to see the spray chart on Aubrey Huff and why are you guys playing him so much to pull on the infield. Shot and ground ball up the middle. And Aubrey Huff with a one-out single. He's been on base three times. This is the direction of outfield hits for Huff. Yeah, it looks like you know he pulls the ball mostly in the air. But I'd like to see the spray chart on where he hits the ball on the ground. Obviously, it's been dictating that he does, or the Nets wouldn't be playing that shift. I just think the shift is the most overrated play in baseball. Posey double down the right field line in the fourth. Here he pops it up. Out is Cora, in is Francoeur, and Francoeur is going to make the running catch. And Posey is retired on one pitch, bringing Pat Burrell to the plate. Well, this is where if you're Pat Burrell, you're thinking one thing. Guy's been throwing me in all day long. Came to San Francisco to hit some jacks. I got five already. I'm looking for a ball out over the plate. Something that I can drive right here. I don't think you'll see Pat Burrell get cheated. You never see Pat Burrell get cheated, but with two outs and a runner on first and a one nothing ball game in the sixth inning, I'm thinking big fly if I'm number nine. And he was, and it snowballs in one strike. Burrell walked in the second, reached on a fielder's choice in the fourth, and on that fielder's choice, he knocked in a run with a ground ball. In with a fastball. One ball and one strike. And one thing about Pat Burrell, he did it with the Phillies, and he's doing it here, is he will make a pitcher work. He's not afraid to take pitches, he's not afraid to hit with two strikes. Foul back. Two and two. Pitch that leaked out over the plate. He wants that one back. That ball was out over the plate. That's the pitch he was looking for. Just fouled it straight back. And that's the reward for working to get to 2-1. If you're a power hitter and you work all the way to 2-1, you got to let it loose. And he did right there. He's staring knees down saying, throw that again. I want to see that pitch one more time, please. Three and two. And now Aubrey Huff will have the advantage of taking off. And if Burrell could hit one in the alleyway, it would make it much easier for Huff to score. On the ground, in the left field, a base hit. So Juan Uribe is going to get another crack at Jonathan Neese. And 
a 3-2 pitch to Burrell. Not necessarily a fastball count. You see right there just a little slider down in the zone. With Huff moving on the pitch, sometimes pitchers treat that like first base is open. So a little off-speed pitch. Burrell, Burrell, excuse me, doing a great job of staying through the baseball. Now Nate Sherholtz is going to run for Pat Burrell. That was a great at-bat. He went up there. He tried to get count leverage. He worked the count to 2-1. and one. He let it fly. Didn't get the pitch. Got it to 3-2 and then said, I'll just take a single. So Arebe, an RBI opportunity. He had one in the fourth inning and he struck out. Skies this one into left center field. Hit very well. Beltron's going to put it away on the track. And that'll end the inning. Two stranded. Seventh inning coming up. for the Giants and Bay check swing fouls this one off the backstop. Torres moves to left field. He goes from right to left. Sherholtz comes into the game after pinch running. And he is in right field. And Bay swings and misses nothing in two. And Bay strikes out, and I'd like to hand the microphone over to my partner, John Miller. That was good. Thank you. That's why it was so hard, all this stuff, that saying all these nice things and everything, and, and I, I appreciated it. But there's nobody in the business better than Dwayne Kuyper, so. Well, thank you, John. <laughs> <laughs> That was Zito's 10th strikeout, John. That matches a season high. Did April 24th against St. Louis. 14th time in his career, they say. David Wright, very dangerous right-handed hitter. Who has struck out twice. He's been two of Zito's 10 strikeouts. One to nothing. The Giants are leading here in the seventh inning. And the big curveball, strike two. Chino has never had more than 11 strikeouts in a game. That's a good pitch right there. 
exactly what you want to do when you're heading the count 0 and 2. Move the batter's feet. Let them know you're there. Throw a fastball in off the plate and then go back out away. He went away. Huff. The wind blowing it back toward the field and Huff with a dive makes the catch. Aubrey Huff with that ball headed toward the seats was wondering if maybe he had room to go get it. And then the wind picked it up and started to push it back toward the field itself and he ended up making an outstanding play. Well if you look at the flags at the top of the stadium that ball got up and out of the stadium and flags are blowing straight out to left field. So Aubrey Huff doing a good job of finding the rail seeing if he had room and then the, the ball came all the way back and that's why you always have to keep your feet moving. Beltran shallow right a long run and he won't get there. Sherholtz made the dive and it is a double for Beltran. That's that zone out there where the right fielder is plugging up the, the big gap in right center against the possible triple or even inside the park homer. And it's tough to get to a ball right toward the line like that. Yeah, late in the game in a one-run ball game, you see Nate Sherholtz playing deep. You're playing no doubles defense. You don't want anything hit over your head. Great try by Nate Sherholtz coming on strong, but Carlos Beltran, to his credit, was busting it out of the batter's box. A lot of times you'll see a guy pop up to right field, maybe jog to first base, but in the, a one-run game, Beltran hustling to second base. And Barry Zito's got to be careful right here. That's what he and Buster Posey are talking about. Jeff Frank Poor, the hitter. He's got Ike Davis, the left-handed batter, on deck. Jeff Frank, Frank Poor, very aggressive. So you're not, you don't necessarily want to put the winning run on first base with a free pass, but you got to be very careful right here. Jeff Frank Poor, a very aggressive hitter. Barry Zito can throw some balls in the dirt, maybe try to get him to fish. One of the second hit for the Mets in this game. He chased that one, a slider up. And fouled back out of play. We got away with one right there. That was not one of his better pitches tonight. A slider up in the strike zone. Jeff Francoeur, you know he's swinging at the first pitch. And thank goodness he fouled it off for the Giants. Francoeur has lined out to left, popped out to second. Two down. Very high. And Francoeur was not tempted. One ball and one strike. Oh, we talked about it earlier, John. This can be like that two-strike situation for Barry Zito. He can treat this like there is two strikes. You have a left-handed hitter on deck. You can bounce some stuff here and try to make Frank Poor fish. A bloop. Huff gets there. Quite an inning for Aubrey Huff chasing down pop fouls. Seven-inning stretch, one-nothing Giants. The Giants and the Mets. Matt Kane, this was in New York, hitting Mets All Star David Wright right in the head. It was unintentional, and David Wright missed most of the remainder of the season. That was last August and never really recovered. Didn't have his All Star type numbers, but this season, we're happy to say David Wright back on track. He was fine after that and is fine this season. Go to the All Star game just a few days ago in Anaheim and, in fact, even collected a couple of hits. And FP, I know you were hit a lot of times. Do you ever forget about something like that? I mean, that, that's so hard to take. 
No, when you get hit in the head, you remember that. I mean, I don't think people realize how loud that is in your helmet. It sounds like there's a bomb going off. But I'm sure David Wright looked down at those different unis they had on that day with the big N on the chest and the big Y on the chest and was wondering what team he was playing for. Ball one to Pablo Sandoval. Here we go to the last of the seventh. Pablo has struck out looking and lined out to center. He'll be followed by Aaron Rowan and then Barry Zito. Jonathan Nice. Base hit to right field against Nice. Fred Coor hustles over to cut it off. And it's a single for Pablo. And that, that was a screamer. We haven't seen him hit that many balls with that kind of authority. Batting right-handed, but that's the second straight at bat where he's hit one right on the nose. Yeah, Pablo's been doing a good job post-All-Star break. Last night left-handed, tonight right-handed. See how slow his leg kick? He's been herky-jerky from the right side where that leg kick has been fast and late. And he's landing hard on his front foot. His head is moving all over the place. A great job right there of starting early, getting your foot down, seeing the ball away and hitting it away. We said before, Pablo Sandoval's got to play against left-handers to figure this thing out. A last-minute addition to the lineup tonight. That was a bigger at-bat than you would think for Pablo Sandoval. The curveball blocked in the dirt by Barajas. One ball and no strikes to Rowan, who has flied out to shallow right and walked. Now the Mets are going to get the bullpen busy for the first time back of Nice. With a right-hander and a left-hander starting to throw. That's off the fist. Could be two. Tejada to second one. Cora to first in the dirt. Not in time. And a hard slide at second by Pablo to take out Alex Cora as he tried to make the turn in that double play. Or that would be double play. And uh, he is not moving well right now. Well, Pablo Sandoval, there's never been a question that he's played the game hard. He plays hard every single night. And a late slide right there, but a clean slide. He didn't go out of the baseline. He didn't roll over and barrel roll the guy. He just, that's a late, hard slide. And Alex Cora probably could have done a better job of getting out of the way, but he got a tough feed from Tejada. As a second baseman, when you're going to turn a double play, you're blind. You don't see the runner coming. So you're relying on your shortstop to give you a good feed. If you get a good feed, you can get out of the way. But if you get a low feed, your priority becomes catching the baseball. So you've got to catch the baseball first to get the lead out. You can't think about turning the double play, and you can't think about getting out of the way. So for Alex Cora on the low feed from the 20-year-old Tejada, he had to get out of the way. And he didn't. He couldn't. He didn't know Pablo Sandoval was that tight. Didn't know he was on him that quickly. Bunt situation for Barry Zito, and the Mets make the throw to first with all the infielders moving around. Nice will go to first with Cora covering. Tenth time this year that Barry Zito has gotten down a sacrifice bunt. He was not able to do it back in the fifth inning when he popped it up. Well, like I said earlier, it's tough to bunt when you're left on left. And left-handed hitter versus left-handed pitcher and a left-handed hitter that doesn't play every day. So for Barry Zito, pop the last one up. That one, he looked like he had the barrel on top of his hands. And what I mean by that is when you're bunting and everybody knows you're bunting, you've got to angle the bat so the barrel's above your hands. You make, you put the bat at the top of the strike zone, and then you make sure you get it down. It allows the base runner to get a good read and get to second base. Good job, Barry Zito. Lead-off man Andres Torres now to try and knock in a run. Over the outside at the knees for a called strike from Jonathan Nice. Well, this would be a huge RBI for the Giants. You got a one run game. Barry Zito has to be perfect out there right now. You got another run to the board. It takes away a lot of things from the Mets offense. Ooh, got him chasing that curveball in the dirt. And it's 0 2. Torres has flied out to right center, struck out, and then he had a fly ball into a double play. Zito got caught unable to get back to first base in that fly ball back in the fifth inning. Giants have hit three double plays in the game one way or the other. Another curve blocked by Barajas. One ball, two strikes. The Giants, the only run of the game scored in the fourth inning. A walk to Huff, a double by Posey, and then a ground ball to, to second. And Joey, or rather Alex Cora, Joey Cora's younger brother, Tried to throw out Huff at the plate and was just a little bit late with the throw. So an RBI for Pat Burrell, the only run of the game as we play the seventh. There is Huff in the hole with Renteria on deck. One and two the count. And the fastball. 
gets a piece of it, stay alive. This is where if you're Andres Torres, you got to take a little bit out of your swing. Buster Posey does a great job of this two-strike hit. And a lot of times Andres Torres takes some big swings early in the count. Right now he's just got to spread out, battle, put the ball in play, and hopes he can get something to the outfield to score Aaron Rowan. Barajas out to talk to Nice. Nice has been very strong tonight. Giants have had their chances against him. They've had six hits. He's walked three. Burrow reached on a fielder's choice, so they've had ten base runners against him, but just the one run. And look at Zito, the game face in the background there, just behind Bruce Bochy. He's been focused all night long. Man on a mission. Trying to prove something after throwing 113 pitches in four innings his last outing. So 96 tonight in seven innings and has allowed only two hits. One of them that bloop double by Beltran in the first half of this inning. The curve just got a piece of that one to stay alive. That's great. It's a great piece of hitting right there. And you say, FB, how in the world is that a great piece of hitting? Well, when you have two strikes and you're in battle mode, you got a big runner out at second base and you're trying to pick up an RBI. A lot of times as a hitter, you're just trying to buy yourself another pitch. Foul off a ball, just get a piece of it. See another pitch. Stay alive. On the hands of that fastball. And again, Torres fights it off. One ball, two strikes. The Mets with the right hander and the left hander. In their bullpen, the right hander, Elmer Descends. The left hander, Pedro Feliciano. There they are. Descends number 64. Feliciano, number 25. The Giants ahead one to nothing here in the seventh inning. Rowan at second, ready to run at the crack of the bat. And strike three. The high hard one. Nice, seven strong. One to nothing, Giants on to the eighth. Mm. New at Carl's Jr. And there's Barry Zito doing that thing he has done so well, so often tonight. One run, six hits for the Giants. No runs, two hits for the Mets against Zito, who has ten strikeouts in seven innings, while walking one and just the two hits allowed. And the big curve low and outside to Ike Davis, dangerous left-handed hitter who has struck out in each of his at-bats tonight. Rod Barajas and Alex Cora to follow for the Mets here in the eighth inning. 41,869, the paid crowd. That is a strike with a fastball. One and two, he checked his swing but called a strike by Brian Onora. This will be the 100th pitch of the night for Barry Zito. 
And I think you hit it immediately at the outside of the telecast uh, FP. That slider low and outside for a ball. Two and two. Zito has been a man on a mission tonight against the Mets. Two and two the count to Ike Davis. The curve. And he fouled it down off his foot. Still two and two. And I think I've been most impressed about with Barry Zito tonight is just his tempo. He's gotten the ball and thrown it, kept his defense in the game. We talk about maybe his last couple of starts in Colorado, Milwaukee. He didn't have this tempo because he wasn't throwing strikes. His defense was on the field forever behind him. And tonight you're seeing the good plays by Aubrey Huff. You're seeing good plays all over the place. It's because Barry Zito's in the strike zone. He's working fast. Center field, but Aaron Rowan with plenty of room. One away. The Mets, such has been Zito's dominance over them, have had only one base runner get as far as second base against him. And they've had only three men reach base at all in the first place. And the one who reached second base, Carlos Beltran, did so after hitting a pop fly that nobody could catch in shallow right field. Rod Barajas and a pop-up foul. Aubrey Huff, the wind blows it back and he makes the catch! It has been a friendly win for the Giants on that first base side. Well, you knew he wasn't going to give up on this play because of the last couple have almost blown back into fair territory. You see the people in the front row actually leaning out to catch that baseball. The wind has been blowing hard at the top of the stadium, over the stadium, out to left field. So Aubrey Huff, a veteran play right there, staying with the baseball. Now for the Mets, a pinch hitter, and this uh, I think is the man they just brought up today, Justin Turner, an infielder who had been with Buffalo in the International League. They sent Nick Evans back to the minors today. Turner takes a curve in the dirt for ball one. He is pinch hitting for Alex Cora. Now Cora got roughed up a little bit on that takeout slide by Pablo Sandoval and the Giants half of the seven. So maybe Cora is leaving because of that or maybe because they want that right handed hitter up there rather than the lefty Cora. I suppose it could go either way. Two and oh the count. The pitcher's spot is due up next for the Mets and Angel Pagan has come out on deck. Two down nobody on. Justin Turner was hitting 297 in Buffalo, 25 years old, had three homers, 16 batted in in 42 games there. And he had been in the Baltimore Orioles organization. The Mets had just claimed him off waivers in late May from Baltimore. Three and oh. And that is the high strike, three and one now to Turner. Turner out of Cal State Fullerton. And had been in the Orioles organization the last couple of years. So three and one the count to Justin Turner. The Giants bullpen with Brian Wilson heading down. And a foul right back beneath us into the second deck. Full count to Turner. Turner had some earlier big league experience with Baltimore this year back in April. Got into five games with them and went 0 for 9. And then they sent him to uh, the International League, the AAA, to Norfolk. Hit 250 at Norfolk this year. Two down, nobody on. Eighth inning, Barry Zito and the Giants leading. One to nothing. Three and two the count. Big pitch here. Now Turner asks for time. So Zito and Buster Posey trying to get together on what pitch to next thrower. Now to Justin Turner. And here it comes. The high changeup, and he missed with it. So that is Zito's second walk. And you got Brian Wilson getting ready in the bullpen as Angel Pagan, a switch hitter, is entered in as a pinch hitter for Jonathan Neese. The Giants are leading and have led since the fourth inning, but that lead is precarious, the, the barest of all possible margins, just the one run. 
Well, even if you don't have a lot of info on Justin Turner at first base right now, if you're Bruce Bochy, you have to treat it like he stole 100 bases in AAA in a one-run ball game with two outs. You have to take care and control the running game. Strike one to Pagan. He didn't like to call. Pagan hitting 311 for the match. Six homers, 40 batted in. He's been a pretty much a regular player for the Mets in the first half of the season in the absence of Carlos Beltran. Sandoval hugs the line deep at third. And the fastball is very high and outside. One ball, one strike. Now you see Pablo, the second baseman, Uribe, pulled over toward the middle. The white, the right side of the infield is wide open with Huff on the bag with Turner. A change up got him out of the front foot. Rowan waiting for it. That's eight shutout innings for Barry Zito. And a standing ovation for Zito as he heads off the field. Start for Barry Zito. He had just one win in his last 10 starts, and so far tonight, the dude is dealing. Left to a standing ovation in the last half inning. Zito matching his season high tonight with 10 strikeouts, really, as the Mets off balance from start to finish. His career high, by the way, for Barry Zito 11 strikeouts, so just one away from matching his career high. And FP, you said it. Really important for Barry really to stay ahead and obviously attack the zone but not give up too much when he had two strikes on the hitters. Back up to you. Well, he had to be perfect tonight. Giants got him one run. That's all he's gotten and he was up to the task. He's always been a good second half pitcher. So Barry Zito off to a great start in the second half of the season for the San Francisco Giants. Now he as good as he'd been he wouldn't mind if the Giants went out and got him another run. <laughs> I suppose that would do or. He wouldn't mind if they got even more than that. Renteria, the hitter against the new Mets pitcher, Bobby Parnell. And uh, Edgar's swing broke down right in the middle. It's 0 1. He has doubled to right, grounded to third, and grounded to second. The Mets also have a new second baseman, Justin Turner, after pinch hitting for Alex Cora, stays in to play second base. Aubrey Huff on deck, Buster Posey due up third. One to nothing, Giants. And he. Hit that ball down the right field line and uh, whoops. And uh, another difficult play there for Steve Schwartz, the first baseline ball dude. With his Oakland A's glove on. Bobby Parnell, fastball 95 miles an hour. He throws it about 87% of the time. So if you're a San Francisco Giants hitter right now, you're Edgar Renteria, you're sitting dead red all the way. He does throw an occasional slider. Oh, and to the count. There is Turner to backhand it. And one away. And Huff, who has not been retired tonight. 
One run, six hits for the Giants. No runs, two hits for the Mets. Jonathan Neese, the uh, rookie starter for the Mets, went seven innings. One run, six hits allowed. Four strikeouts, three walks. Pretty impressive. Giants had a lot of base runners against him, but he always seemed to get the ground ball when he needed it or whatever he needed. The only run against him scored on a, a ground ball. Huff whacks it into center field for a base hit. That's the fourth straight time Aubrey Huff has been on base. Three singles and a walk. So now Buster Posey. There is Brian Wilson getting ready in the bullpen. So perhaps Gito's on his final pitch. He's at 112 for the game. The Mets will have the top of their order up in the ninth inning. Tejada, Bay, and Wright. So they'll give it their best shot in the ninth. Huff back to the bag at first. You had to assume that Zito's done for the night. I mean, if you remember back to last night, Tim Lincecum had the ninth inning. There was no Brian Wilson sighting. There was nobody up in the bullpen. That was Lincecum's game all the way. But I think if you told Bruce Bochy before the game that Barry Zito was going to go eight strong innings and strike out as many guys as he did, and that would be it. He'd take it. I mean, you just want to leave him with a good feel in his mouth. After last game, I mean, that must have been a long all-star break for Barry Zito. So a good start to the second half of the season. You bring Brian Wilson in. That's what he does. He closes games. That's why he gets paid the big bucks. And for Barry Zito, just an outstanding performance. And Jonathan East, too. I mean... R.A. Right, Dickey can go over to Jonathan Nice's locker tonight after the game and say, dude, I know how you feel because I pitched pretty good last night. Our team isn't scoring many runs. They're not hitting with runners in scoring position. If you go back to the Mets' last homestand, they were just 7 for 51, a 130 average with runners in scoring position. And so far this series, the Mets have picked up offensively where they left off before the All-Star break. Buster Posey, Dan Worthen had a long visit at the mound with Bobby Parnell. Posey one for three. Ball and one the count. 94 mile hour fastball. He just took off on the inside and up. Right there. Strike two. When you see that, what, what does it say to you? Well, I mean, I don't think I think you got fooled by the movement on the first pitch. When you're on the side and you're on deck and you see the scouting report, you know about velocity. But as far as movement goes, you have to see a pitch. Your eyes will tell you about the movement. I think Posey was fooled on the first pitch by the sink. Into the hole. Tejada gets one at second. And double play. Well turned by Justin Turner at second. With some heat from Aubrey Huff. So one nothing on to the ninth.
him in Cooperstown next weekend. One of the people that voted to get him in there, a very familiar face. Take a look. The vote is from the fellow sportscasters. I know I voted for John. So personally, I'm thrilled that uh, he validated my vote. And uh, I also think the world of John, so I'm very happy for him. Well, John, in one word of advice, and this comes from Vin Scully, he says, be careful, you might get a little choked up come induction day. Back up to you. The man, Vin Scully, for me, the, the greatest broadcaster in baseball, the greatest baseball broadcaster there ever was and ever likely to be. So I'm uh, deeply touched by that. Here is Brian Wilson. Try and save this one for Barry Zito. He has no margin for error as Tejada takes ball one. The Giants have only the one run lead. The Giants also with a couple of changes as Wilson enters the game as part of a double switch. And I said Tejada, I, I beg your pardon, Chris, I'm, I'm still talking, I'm still thinking about Vinny. Chris Carter is the pinch hitter for Tejada. Vinny. Glad the vote's already done, but he take it back. <laughs> <laughs> one and one to Carter. And a foul out of play off to the left. Way behind that. Wilson fastball. Jason Bay on deck, then David Wright. Carlos Beltran due fourth in the inning. The Mets will take their best shot here in the ninth against the Giants all-star closer who pitched a perfect eighth inning for the National League of the All-Star Game on Tuesday. Going with that high hard one at 96 miles an hour. One and two. We talk about the 27th out in a one-run ball game being the toughest one to get. For me, when you're a closer and you come in on the one-run saves, the 25th out, the first out of the ninth inning, that's the one you got to get. You don't want to get anybody on base. You definitely don't want the leadoff hitter getting on. So for Brian Wilson, to me, this is the biggest at bat of the inning. One and two the count. You saw Ishikawa, now the first baseman, also in. The slider puts him away. And that's been the difference with Brian Wilson this year. The command has been unbelievable. Fastballs away, hitting the spots, and then right when you're you're thinking 95, 96, I gotta gear up. This guy's got an amazing fastball. He drops a slider on your back knee. Your brain tells you, your eyes tell you that's a heater all the way. You commit to your swing and you find out when it hits a glove that it was a slider. Starts Jason Bay with the slider. And it's 0-1. Bay has struck out looking, flied out to right center, and struck out swinging. David Wright on deck. One to nothing, Giants, ninth inning. The slider. That's a fair ball. And Posey throws him out. And he was out even before Posey made that throw. It's still fun to watch Buster Posey throw, but yeah, Jason Bay stepped on the baseball when it was in fair territory. You're automatically out right there. But give Buster Posey some credit on the pitch calling right here. He set up the slider nicely with part of the at bat before, and he went slider, slider to Jason Bay. You saw right there. That they stepped on the ball in fair territory. Jerry Manuel were arguing the call. But I think he got it right. I think Brian Onora got that call right. Once the ball is in play, in fair territory, if you kick it, if you hit it, and you're out of the batter's box, you're out. So two down, nobody on, and the Mets all-star David Wright coming up. Here's another look from a different angle. Ball out into fair ground. Stepped right on it. A little Bellotta action right there, a little sand wedge with some backspin in the green. Stepped on it and you're out. How do you score that? That's a uh, put out for the catcher, unassisted. So David Wright. He's the Mets' best player, and he is dangerous. The slider at the knees. All in one. Wright has struck out twice and fouled out to first. He is 0 for 3. And he is 0 for 7 in this series. And that hard breaking ball in the dirt outside at 90 miles an hour. One ball, one strike. If you're Brian Wilson right here, you see all good closers throughout the history of baseball. When the game is on the line, it's a one-run ball game. And you've got a guy that can 
beat you with one swing. You want to stay away. You want to make him beat you to the big part of the ballpark. Don't give him anything he can pull. He takes that slider. Two balls and a strike. Now, the Dodgers were beaten again tonight in St. Louis. Second night in a row that L.A. has lost. The Rockies lost in Cincinnati. The Reds beat him. Three to two. But first place San Diego way ahead of Arizona in the last of the eighth at Petco Park. Slider. That's a base hit into center field. So the Mets are still breathing. And here is their cleanup hitter. Just back for his second game of the year. Carlos Beltran. He made his first start last night coming off a, an injury rehab assignment in the minor leagues. Beltran tonight is one for three. He, and here we are in the ninth inning, he is the only Met to have reached second base. As K Rod, Francisco Rodriguez, the Mets closer, is getting ready just in case. Beltran hit a bloop double with two down in the seventh inning. No other Met has gotten as far as second base in this game. Well, David Wright with 15 stolen bases. I don't know if he's thinking about going, but he has absolutely no lead at first base right now. I think. He's just going to leave it up to Carlos Beltran. Time taken. So all on the count to Beltran. And this is uh, a sequence similar to the one that presented itself for Brian Wilson in the All-Star game. In a tight game late, facing All-Stars. Fastball well off the outside. One ball, one strike. The only difference is he doesn't have the orange high tops on him. <laughs> Got the orange jersey, I guess, making up for him. Well, he, I guess he loves that whole orange Friday concept, so they wouldn't let him wear the jersey in the All-Star game, so he went with the high tops. And the slider. And that one didn't do what he wanted to do, and he's behind in the count, two and one. Beltran has only had one other plate appearance against Wilson, and he hit a double against him. The outfield is deep all the way around. Big pitch here. And he missed with it. Three and one. Jeff Rancourt, a right-handed hitter, is on deck. Be interesting to see if Jerry Manuel starts David Wright right here. He is the possible tying run. He is not running. Got the call on the outside there. Or maybe even a little bit off the outside. Full count. Kind of that fastball away. That looked like it was definitely a ball, but Brian Wilson, the Giants will take it. And isn't this a typical Brian Wilson save? 3-2, one long ball game right going on the pitch. An all-star at the plate. Orange Friday. So Everybody's standing. We should count plays deep at first. There goes right. Struck it out! And at the end, he just powered one right by him. The Giants have beaten the Mets back of some outstanding pitching for the second night in a row. One to nothing tonight after a two nothing win behind Lincecum last night. And Wilson saves it for Barry Zito, who was never better. Zito, a sensational night. Eight innings, no runs, two hits, ten strikeouts. Superb.